One can see from space how the human race has changed the Earth. Nearly all the available land has been cleared of forest and is now used for agriculture or urban development. The polar ice caps are shrinking and the desert areas are increasing. At night, the Earth is no longer dark, but large areas are lit up. All this is evidence that human exploitation of the planet is reaching a critical limit, but human demands and expectations are ever increasing. We cannot continue to pollute the atmosphere, poison the ocean, and exhaust the land. There isn't any more available. One of the most serious consequences of our actions is global warming, brought about by rising levels of carbon dioxide from the burning of fossil fuels. The danger is that the temperature increase might become self-sustaining if it has not done so already. Drought and deforestation are reducing the amount of carbon dioxide recycled into the atmosphere, and the warming of the seas may trigger the release of large quantities of CO2 trapped on the ocean floor. In addition, the melting of the Arctic and Antarctic ice sheets will reduce the amount of solar energy reflected back into space and so increase the temperature further. We don't know where the global warming would stop, but the worst case scenario is that Earth would become like its sister planet, Venus, with a temperature of 250 centigrade, and raining sulfuric acid. The human race could not survive in those conditions. As technology advances, and our society becomes more complex, we have the capacity to destroy ourselves in more and more ways. Nuclear war and climate change are obvious examples, but there will be others we haven't even thought of yet. We live in an increasingly dangerous world, and however careful we are, it is likely that disaster will strike at some time in the future. However, if we can avoid killing ourselves on planet Earth for the next hundred years or so, we should have spread out into space. This would remove the danger that a single disaster could wipe out the entire human race. Life on Earth is possible only because a number of parameters lie in certain very narrow ranges. Some of these are clearly environmental, like the Earth has the right temperature and pressure to have liquid water. In a galaxy of a hundred billion stars, many of which have several planets, these conditions will be met somewhere. But the fact that galaxies and stars exist at all, that nucleosynthesis takes place in stars, and that chemistry allows complicated macromolecules, depend on the parameters of the theory lying in a small region. Is this apparent fine-tuning of the constants of nature, evidence of design, or is it another environmental effect? According to M-theory, our best candidate for a theory of everything, the same fundamental theory can lead to a large number of effective theories with different values of the parameters, the so-called constants of nature. Somewhere in this vast landscape of effective theories, there should be some that allow life on planets like Earth. Let's hope there are such theories, or we don't exist.